friends, it's Miss Piggy. I hope you are all having a great day so far. I'd like to welcome everyone back to our at home series where we create art at home for our home. Friends, I'm super excited to introduce our project today, which brings me to ask you this question. Have you ever been maybe on Zoom studying and maybe it was a little bit too loud? And maybe you wanted everyone to quiet down, but you couldn't express it out loud because you're sitting in class. So friends, today our project is going to be creating a do not disturb sign or a quiet police sign or a shh, I'm setting sign. So it's up to you today. But friends, let's get started with our values. Respect yourself, respect your own art, and respect the space. Let's find out what we need today. So you'll need a paper bag or newspaper because we're gonna get a little bit messy, just a little bit. A marker. Paper plate. Some tape. Some yarn or string, if you have any. If not, it's okay. And our medium of the day, which is chalk. Which introduces, uh, which brings me to the technique of the day, which is blending. So we're basically gonna layer and mix colors to create smooth, soft textures and transitions. Okie dokie. All right, friends, let's get started. So go ahead and grab your paper bag or your newspaper or anything to protect your table or your workspace. I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna grab your paper plate. I don't know if anyone remembers that we did our, old, our whole art show on paper plates last time for our Garden of Peace series. So I'm excited to switch it up this time around using the same canvas. So on this paper plate, we're gonna create our own sign. So think of a message that you'd like to represent on your canvas that communicates that you might need maybe people in your home to just quiet down when you're studying or you're in your Zoom classes or anything like that. So you have your paper plate and let's grab our marker and think of a message for a second and see what you might want to say. At my grandma's house where I typically make videos or I'm in different meetings through Zoom, we typically just put a post-it note on our door that says like Zooming live. So then either my grandma knows to wait or not to open the door or maybe my grandma will know to turn down her TV because she likes to turn that up pretty loud when she watches her shows. <laughs> so think of a sign or think of your message that you might want to say. And it could be fun for you. I think I'm going to put shh because I like that sound like shh. And then maybe I'll say quiet, please. Yeah. I'm gonna put shh, quiet, please. So just think of what you wanna say. And before you start writing, take a look at your canvas and see how you wanna fit your words. You could play with the sizing of your letters and your style. Feel free to incorporate any kind of lettering or hand style that you would like whether it's bubble letters or cursive or print, or you can even mix it up. So I'm gonna start my writing. And I'm gonna put like lots of S's. So it's like a long sh. And I'm kind of playing with like the shapes of my S's. Some are small, some are larger, some are tilted at angles, kind of fitting them in between negative space. And I'm gonna play 
with my H's and mixing them up with uppercase and lowercase just for fun. I think I'm gonna make like a little ladder of little lowercase h's so they go from bigger to smaller. And I'm gonna add dots. quiet please. I'm probably going to fill it like inside this negative space right here, this circle. So it's kind of going to be like not perfectly on a line but within. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna do something a little interesting. I'm just kind of like an oxymoron. Meaning like you have two things that contrast each other. So quiet, which is quiet, silent, but I put an exclamation mark. Cause like I really mean it like quiet, but you can't be too loud. <laughs> so I'm just playing around with the, um, the exclamation mark. be polite, I'm gonna put please. Cause it's okay to need something and ask with manners. I'm sure your family members would appreciate that as well. So here's my sign my message Shh. quiet please i like how actually my dots ended up making a period so it's a full complete message and sentence and you could play with different um, emotions if you wanted to shout out loud you can put more exclamation marks it's up to you this is your sign you make it the way you want to make it so after I write my message, friends, you could take time to look at your letters and feel free to add any details or accents. You could even add details and accents around. I mean, there's this whole frame around this plate. You could play with these shapes. If you look closely, there's ridges. So maybe you wanna create patterning or lines around this frame, that's up to you. And maybe you wanna add details to your lettering. So I'm gonna take a look at my own plate and see where I might like to add details. I actually wanna play with this border and I wanna kind of create maybe lines that follow some of these ridges because it fits really well in there with my mark. So I'm just going to create different lines around, I think. I might even try to go off the ridge right into the plate. So if you look closely, there's also another circle shape here on the ridge. So I'm going to alternate by going directly on this border and then going all the way to my inner circle here. So there's two borders there. So I'm just gonna play with that. 
Maybe you don't want lines. Maybe you want to make dots and such. Diamonds. Think of other shapes that you might want to create. And that's all up to you. Maybe you want to color in these ridges. And maybe you don't. While you're making your sign, you could think about where you want to display it. So think about the places where you need that quiet space. Maybe it's your room. So you could hang it on your door. Maybe you want to just tape it right on. Maybe you have a special area where you do your Zoom classes. Maybe it's a little office or like a living room space. So maybe you could hang it on your chair. Sometimes I'm just in my kitchen, like where I am right now, my home, and there is no door. So maybe I could hang it on my face. Just kidding. <laughs> or maybe I could make a necklace, like, shh. Actually, a necklace would be cool. I can't wait to know about your ideas, friends, where you hang your sign. Okay, so I added this border around. I kinda wanna clean up my lines, because some of them are a little bit thin. Which is okay, it just depends on how you want it to look. But just remember, you could always or switch up. We talk about that sometimes. my letters I'm gonna kind of see where I want to add some accents so I might add like different patterns within shapes I like this exclamation mark it's kind of empty right now so I think I'm gonna add some lines in there just give it some more detail depth adding some hearts. I like hearts. I 
and I feel like coloring them in with my marker. And remember friends, if you have any other markers, any other colors, you can always use that. You can also utilize some of the past techniques that we've been using for the past month. Kind of build on that and explore and expand. I'm actually gonna color in this circle, I think. Maybe one more heart. What do you think? I think I like where it's at. Maybe one more heart. <laughs> Alright, I think I like where my sign is right now. So friends, once you finalize and refine your message and your patterning and all that jazz, we will get to our medium of the day, which is chalk. So, with your chalk, friends, this is where we get to our technique of the day. So, think about what colors you like, what colors you might want to explore with, and before you get started, you could take a look at your plate and see where you want to draw shapes or layer. What we're going to do today is kind of explore with the shape of your chalk, depending on what shape it is. I kind of have a new one and like a used one, so you could see the difference of the shapes. This is more refined, rectangular, squarish, you have the point. And then this is one I've used in the past where it's already kind of rounded and all that stuff. So, depending on what shapes you wanna, um, what shapes you wanna create onto your plate, maybe you wanna outline some of your shapes, maybe you wanna underline certain words, that's up to you. So if you wanna create more detail, for example, underlining, go ahead and use your tip of your chalk for more details. And then if you're doing general coloring or just filling in, it's best to use the side of your chalk. So it just depends. General filling and coloring, use the side for any details or like small sh um, lines or shapes, use your tip of your chalk. And here we get to play with layering or mixing colors as well. So. It's up to you on how you'd like to do that. I'm kind of feeling like I want to play with this wave of letters. So I'm probably going to fill in with my purple and pink, or magenta, I think that's more magenta, chalk. So I'm just going to follow these lines and make wavy random patterns. So using the side of my chalk, I'm just going to start with There's my first line using the side of my chalk, the edge or the side. Now I'm gonna do the quiet. Same thing using the edge, just following the line. I chose not to touch the exclamation mark with my chalk yet, because I want to see what I want to do that later. And I'm gonna take another layer. Oh, I'm gonna use pink. And I'm actually gonna use this edge right here, since it's new, just play with that. I'm gonna do a couple of lines. And there we go. Now I'm gonna look at my border and see what I wanna do. And I think I'm gonna play with this. green chalk. And I'm just going to take once again the edge and just, for me, I'm just going to go do a whole border around. So I'm kind of holding my plate 
while I'm dragging my chalk across so it doesn't move. See that here? Yes. So grab, drag, grab, drag. And you could do like several layers. So this is what it looks like so far. So you see that it's covering your letters and that's fine. So I use our marker. So I'm gonna take this blue chalk and I'm gonna actually put the side or the edge of it, I'm going to go around the very most outer edge of this plate. So just grab and drag. Grab and drag. Make sure you press down to get all the chalk in there. So here it goes. Now we're ready to blend. So friends, this is where we might get a little messy. Feel free to um, roll up your sleeves if you need to. And if you don't like the idea of using your hand or your finger to blend, you can try another object, maybe a paper towel or a cotton ball or a Q-tip. That's up to you. For me, I like to get messy, you know I'm speaking. So from here, we're gonna blend. For me, I tend to like to follow the direction, the direction of the chalk. But really, you could really blend any way you'd like. If you want to get messy with it, go ahead. If not, you could follow the patterning of your lines and the direction that you were going to. So I might switch it up. So for now, I'm gonna start with um, my message. Shh, quiet, please, I'm gonna blend. So I'm gonna follow the direction of my Top. I'm holding down my plate and just blending it. Use your finger and just lightly blend. And then I'm gonna go to quiet. And you'll notice that the purple and the magenta are starting to blend and mix together. So you just slowly blend. And they don't have to touch either. You could leave a little white space. For me, what I just ended up doing is actually filling in my exclamation mark. And left a little bit of white between the purple. Give it a highlight. Try blending down, and you'll notice a gradient from dark to light, and that's just from blending down. Now I'm gonna blend my please. I'm just following the circular shape. Give it a little blow, dust it off. So that's my inner circle. I'm gonna blend this a little bit more together. So quiet in the please. All right, now I'm gonna move to my outer border and just take my hand or my finger, make sure you grab your plate and blend. I'm going in a circle. Once again, following the shape of the chalk. Now I'm gonna blend my last color, which is the blue, and I'm gonna go once again around.
if you have lines that you had detail with, you can use the, um, your tip of your finger and just like follow that line as well to give it a really clean edge and blend. If not, you can use your hand and just blend. That's what I'm doing. Create a mix. So this is actually mixing the two colors, green and the blue. So here we go, friends. Here's my sign. Shh, quiet, please. And now we're gonna head to the last stage of our art. So here, you can either grab your yarn and your tape so that you can create a little handle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two ends of my yarn and kind of pinch it together so that you have this. See that? So just hold that together. Then you're gonna flip your plate over, maybe around the middle. You're just gonna put your yarn down. Like that. And then from here, we're gonna tape it. If you don't have yarn, you can always just tape the sign directly onto the door when you need it. But it's up to you. If you do have tape, that's cool. And from here, friends, you have your sign. All right. Woohoo! All right, friends, I hope you had a fun time creating your Do Not Disturb sign. I hope you all had fun. Have a great day.